coming in, but we're going to go ahead and start now. First off, I want to say thank you guys for being here today. And I also want to applaud you guys for being here as well, for taking the initiative to get more familiar with the purchase process and just, you know, set an expectation for you guys. It shows a lot about you guys and I applaud you guys for that. Okay, guys? Cool. We're going to jump straight into a quote that really sticks out to me and this is by Benjamin Franklin. And he says here, by failing to prepare, you are preparing to fail. Guys, the objective of this class today is essentially to set a foundation for you guys to, to get more familiar with the purchase process and, auto, and also to set an expectation for you guys, right? So when you guys are ready to purchase, whether that's a month, a year, um, two years from now, this is something that you guys could reflect to and, and it's a cornerstone on that transaction, okay guys? Cool. We're gonna be going um, straight into it. Today's overview is essentially the purchase process from start to finish. There's six major steps that I'm gonna be touching on and I'm gonna be dissecting a little bit more into detail so that you guys uh, you just, just have that, that further information on what to look out for, right? Uh, the, the reality is consumers don't get the back end of things and that's essentially why I'm having this class so that you guys become more familiar with the process, okay? Uh, we'll jump straight into it. We'll close it off with the financing. Mr. Torres will finish this off. He's actually uh, with Commerce Home Mortgage. He's a direct lender, and he will be discussing as to what the banks look at and different programs available for you guys, you know, to purchase a home at this very moment, essentially. Okay? So step one is going to be selecting the team. When I say selecting the team, essentially it's going to be selecting the team, the, the, the group that's going to be helping you guys and guiding you guys through the purchase process, right? You want to make sure that you solidify this up front so that throughout the transactions when there's hurdles to overcome you guys you guys have the not only the competent realtors lenders inspectors right you guys also have the the trust built knowing that what through the storm you guys are going to be okay right because the reality is is you don't purchase a home overnight this could take months even years so you want to make sure that you have a team that's going to be there tending to your guys's needs and when i say needs if you guys are a type of person who likes to be communicated to and wants to be informed throughout the transaction, it would make sense for you guys to have a team that's able to tend to those needs, right? So this is very important. I always say have this up front so that you guys are prepared to, um, to go through this, through this um, journey because essentially it's a journey and you need to have a team alongside you guys that could tend to your guys' needs. Okay, guys? Cool. Second step, essentially it's going to be obtaining a financial pre-approval. I really want you guys to understand um, what this step really entails. It's not only just to see what you guys qualify for, for a purchase price, right? Um, my team, we're, look, we're, we're looking further into detail as to why you guys are buying, right? What, what brings you to Lakewood? Why do you guys want to buy in this certain city? Or, and, and that really is important to us so that we could know the, the drive, right, what, behind the purchase. And also to solidify exactly what you guys are comfortable paying for on a monthly basis. That's, that's the reality of, of this step right here because it, it wouldn't make sense to put you in a property that you're not comfortable paying for on a monthly basis. You know, our team is to put you guys, our team's job is to put you guys in a position to succeed. And we can only do that by breaking this down up front and finding out exactly what you guys are comfortable for, right? Uh, Ivan will go into further detail as to what this really uh, entails and how the banks see things a little later. But nonetheless, this is very important so that we could get you guys in that position. And uh, you guys are well off, you guys have that property and you guys aren't struggling to pay that monthly basis, right? The, my fear is to sell you guys a property and a year from now, you guys give me a call that you guys have to sell the house due to the monthly payment, right? So it would make sense to definitely tackle this up front. Third step is going to be is when it starts getting a little bit fun, right? View properties uh, within the criteria we have already set, right? Whether it's a condo, townhome, duplex, triplex, two-car garage, three-bedroom, two-bath. We've already solidified this, and now we're viewing property, right? I like to show five to six properties at a time. Why is that? We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket, right? We wanna make sure that we, we have our options wide and there's other buyers as well out there that are looking for property. So we wanna make sure that we have our best foot forward and we're actively looking. We're also grading these properties from one to five when we go view these properties so that um, essentially we're, we're, we're seeing the pros and cons on each house. Anything over a three, I highly recommend considering submitting an offer, right? Why is that? You don't wanna put all your eggs in one basket, first of all. Second of all, there's other buyers that are motivated as well that are looking, that are qualified for the property as well. So we wanna make sure that, like I said, don't put all eggs in one basket and have the best opportunity to purchase a home um, that you guys fall in love with, okay guys? What's in the offer? Essentially, if you guys open up your folders, there's actually a, a document in there that's from the residential purchase agreement. There's some highlights on there, okay? There's three major things you guys want to know about an offer. And this is where 
the, I, I believe now the consumers lack this information and, and, and doesn't give you guys the, the, the best foot forward to, to purchase a home because of the lack of information. So right now I really want to dissect exactly what an offer is and what that entails so that when you guys are ready to submit an offer, you guys could package something up that looks presentable and it looks appealing to a seller and you have a higher chance of your offer getting accepted. Okay? Cool. So there's three major things in an offer and that's going to be price, time frames, and terms. If you guys look at item 1C, it's highlighted in green. There it states that you will be purchasing, this is the offer for $500,000, right? And that's the price. Now, everybody thinks that's the main thing that the sellers are looking at. Yes, it's important, right? It's not the most important thing as well, though. It's, it's a story that we're capturing when we're, submitting, when we're submitting an offer. And essentially, that's one of, the, one of the main things. But if you look right under that, you have something saying the close of escrow shall occur within 21 days, right? After the offer is accepted. That's the time frame portion of things. Escrows on average are about 30 days. Can anybody tell me why it would be, um, you know, why, why, why your offer would look a little better with 21 day escrow? Can anybody? Seller wants to unload the house so they can move or so they can use that money for something else. So the faster the process goes, the, the more convenient for everyone. Exactly, and that's something I want you guys to consider uh, when, when I say submitting an offer. Like I said, on average, they're about 30 days. A seller wants to do two things. They want to sell their property and move on to the next place as, as soon as possible, right? They don't want to deal with, with you know, negotiating back and forth with the stress of having to, you know, have buyers not, not commit to, to their initial obligation on this offer. So when somebody submits a 21-day escrow, it just looks more appealing. It looks like you're more motivated for this property, right? And that's essentially a, a tactic that I use, my team uses, to get your offer accepted, okay? And 21 days is enough time to, to, to do our, our investigations, and I'll jump a little further into detail as, as what escrow is and why it's there and the importance of it. But technically, 21 days is more than enough time. I've been in myself, we've closed deals in 14 days to just give you guys an idea of how, how you know, soon things could, could get wrapped up. Okay, guys? If you guys jump down to the middle of that document, it's highlighted in green. Come on in. Are you here for the seminar? Yes. Come on in. No worries, no worries. So we're actually just discussing the offer right now. If you open up your folder, there's a document in there that states uh, the residential purchase agreement. And we're, we're jumping into that right now. So I want you guys to really understand and see this, this section right here where it says financing terms. It says initial deposit on this specific offer to be $7,500, okay? Do you guys see that highlighted in yellow? Cool. So essentially what that is, is showing commitment, right? It's, it's putting some skin in the game, right? And, and, and the seller sees that generally one to 3% of the purchase price, on average one to 3%, in this case, one and a half percent, right? Uh, of 500,000 to $7,500. This, this is an initial deposit that you wire to escrow one to three, after one to three business days when your offer gets accepted, okay? Does anybody have any questions in regards to, to the deposit? Or have you guys heard anything about the deposit? Wasn't it supposed to be like 20%? Or That's the down payment. And I'm, oh. and I'm glad you asked that. So that this, this initial deposit that you wire into escrow one to three business days after the offer gets accepted is part of your down payment. Okay? So, so let's say you have a down payment of $15,000, right? Which is about three, three and a half percent of 500,000, right? You're putting 7,500 into escrow as your initial deposit, which essentially is half of your down payment, okay? So that means towards the end of escrow, which we'll get further into detail, when, when, it, when time comes to wire the remaining of the, the money, it's only gonna be $7,500, because you already have 7,500 into escrow already, okay? And lastly, we have terms, and, and terms are, are essentially rich. I want, the, I want the fridge, I want the stove, right? We write that up and those are part of our terms that, that we put in this offer. This is just one page of the entire purchase agreement, which is about 12 to, 12 to 15 pages. And essentially it's a lot of definitions, disclosures for you guys, but this is where all the juice is right here on, on this document right here, as you guys could tell. Any questions on, on the offer section right now? You could lose your deposit. Perfect question. So this, this deposit can be lost if not, if, if not protected, right? Basically if I don't do my job and come on in. Come on in. Go ahead and take a seat where you guys find open. Just to give you guys an update, we're talking about what an offer entails, what's in the offer, and Hector just asked an amazing question that, that this deposit is at risk 
if you don't perform, right? If you don't do what you say you were gonna do on the offer. And, and we'll discuss a little bit more on the safety nets that you guys have as buyers. And this is where it really starts getting interesting because as buyers, you guys are protected. You guys saw this house maybe twice, right? And you submitted an offer. And if you get it accepted, you haven't seen the plumbing. You don't know what's in the attic. You don't know the roof. So, so as buyers, you guys are protected. And, and we'll jump straight into, into that and, and escrow with that entails. So after the offer gets accepted, just to go backwards a little bit, Three things can happen when you submit an offer. It could get accepted, it could be countered, some terms could be countered, maybe the seller would say, yes, I like the 500,000, but I don't like the fact that you're asking me for my fridge and my stove, so that's countered out, okay? Or it could just be rejected completely due to the fact that they have other offers that they're only entertaining those at, the, at that moment, okay? Any, any questions? Hector, we'll jump into how that deposit is protected and, and you guys as buyers as a whole. I want you guys to, to just think as buyers, you guys are protected entirely. The seller has a, a lot of control prior to entering escrow, but once you guys enter escrow, it, the spectrum it switches, right? And I'll jump straight into that. So escrow, who is escrow? Escrow is a third party service that essentially oversees the transaction and keeps everybody accountable on, on what they said they were gonna do on the purchase agreement. If anything changes, need be, they make sure that everybody's still in agreement, right? Both parties are still in agreement. They're signing off on certain things that they, they agreed to during escrow. Therefore, they're overseeing the file and making sure that everything is running smoothly. Okay, guys? That's who they are. Why is it important? Going back to the, to, to the point where I said that as buyers, you guys are protected. There's three protections that you guys have. They're called contingencies, guys. Has anybody heard, heard of this, these three contingencies that we have as buyers? Let me write them down. Okay, guys. So your first safety net as a buyer is your inspection. As I just said, you don't know what's through these walls. You don't know what's in, under the house, right? The plumbing, you don't know what the roof looks like. So how do we determine that this house is suitable and safe enough for us to walk in and have our families right over and living in this property? We do our inspections. Can, any, any, just shout it out. What type of inspection would you want to do on a property before purchasing it? Can anybody, go ahead. See if there's asbestos in the walls? That's, that's one inspection, that's one. That's definitely one. I, any other? Plumbing, so you could get a plumber out there. Right. And that will be disclosed in the natural hazard disclosures. So, and, and that's a document that's ordered through escrow as well. And they'll provide you all those natural hazard disclosures, including the earthquake. Keep in mind, we do live in California. <laughs> Flood, all that. Fire, hazard, everything will be in that disclosure right there. But though, that, that is just dis being disclosed. When I say inspection, um, I'm going to let you guys know that, excuse me? Roof? You could get a roofer out there? Exactly. 100%. I'm looking at four main things, and, this, and these four main things can be looked at off of one general inspection. I work, and this is, this is where I go back to the initial step. Why is it important to have a good team that has, that's ethical, that can tend to your guys' needs, that has a client focus, right, that keeps the client first, and that's going to be honest and transparent? I, I've heard a lot of stories, unfortunately, of, of, of these terrible things, right? Because of the initial step was disregarded and they, and they ended up being represented by somebody that was not, had, that didn't have their best interest essentially. So, so when, I, when I send out my home inspector that I work with, you know, over 20 years in the business, he used to be a contractor, he's looking at four main things. And this is, this is done off of one general home inspection. It, this is the only cost outside of escrow for you guys that you guys concur, incur, excuse me, which is $350, but a general. general home inspection. It, it, you're gonna look at four main things. You're looking at plumbing, foundation, you're looking at the roof, and electrical. I'm concerned with those things. Why? Because those are costly things, right? And, and we really wanna know up front. So I have this inspection done within four days of entering escrow. Because time is of the essence, right? We have 21 days to decide if we wanna move forward with this property. And by default, this inspection is 17 days. By default. On the residential purchase agreement, if we don't change it, by default, it's 17 days. You have 17 days to do all your inspections, to negotiate any repairs, and decide if you want to move forward. By the 17th day, they start knocking on our door, saying, hey, where's the removal of your contingency, stating that you are removing this as a safety net, and you guys are willing to move forward 
with the purchase, knowing all the facts that you guys have already found, right? It's a part of your buyer's due diligence. So a general home inspection, he's taking a look at the roof, he's taking a look at the plumbing, electrical, foundation. We'll get that report back, he'll actually explain it and go over what his findings in and there. So we have him out there by the third day, by the third day we know what's going on with the house. We know what's going on with the house, which is very important to know early on so we could decide if this is the property we want to move forward with. Any questions right now? And this, 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 I'll be honest with you, this is what makes and breaks deals in escrow because there could be uh, a leaky roof. There could be a foundational issue. There could be some plumbing, right? Galvanized plumbing that, you know, we were recommended to do a, a sewer line inspection and that didn't come out too clean. A any questions on this? So let's say the inspector does find something, say a leak that will cost, let's say for the sake of argument, $5,000 to mm -hmm. repair. Mm -hmm. Like would a common counter offer at that point would be, we won't buy the house unless you fix that or knock $5,000 off of the purchase price so we can do it ourselves, stuff like that. Is that gonna become? So perfect, that, that's an option. There's something called a request for repairs. So after, after these inspections that we do, there's something called a, re a request for repairs. Therefore, we are asking the seller, hey, there's a, we found the leaky roof, Here's our inspection report to vouch that. And we, we want this fixed, replaced, or we want to credit toward, towards the buyer, or we want to drop the price. Those are your options. And this is where you have to, like I said, going back to the team, you have to have a solid team that's going to be willing to fight for you guys, right? Perfect example, I've been eyeing an escrow right now on a property in Bellflower. The roof was shot, completely shot. We got, we got the whole roof replaced. We got the entire roof replaced. Is it common? It, it, it has to be the right you know, scenario. It has to be the right scenario. And, but we were able to execute that. Nonetheless, those are your options when you do fi find something like that that you guys are not comfortable moving forward with on the property. You, ha you have the option to request a repair, which essentially you could have the, the, the entire thing replaced, fixed, or credited, you know, closing costs credited, which is money basically out of the seller's net that's gonna be credited to you at the close of escrow, or essentially drop the price down. Whatever scenario would best you know, fit you guys and overall, right, financially, that you guys feel comfortable moving forward with, we will negotiate that. If we cannot come to a common ground, right, in escrow, we have to be in agreement. If we cannot come into a common ground, we cancel. And that deposit is, you have it back in your, in your pocket. Why? Because we didn't remove this. You have to physically sign a contingency removal saying, hey, we're removing our inspection contingency. You have to physically sign that and we submit that to the other party. So just because it's by default it's 17 days, doesn't mean it just removes on its own. We have to physically sign something. I'll be honest with you guys, I've had transactions where I didn't remove any of these because nobody was knocking on my door. And everything was, everything was fine, all the findings were okay. I just don't like to remove these because I like to protect you guys as much as possible. Any questions on that? Mr. Galicia? So, so this is a safety net right here for that deposit. So, so in an instance that, you know, they don't want to replace the roof, hey, we're canceling, we send in the cancellation, and your deposit is wired back to you. Okay, guys? And like I said, by default, 17 days, can anybody tell me why we would want to lower that? Why would, why would we shorten that down? In what scenario and what's the benefit to, to shortening, that, shortening that down? Just make your offer stronger. It just shows the seller. When, I, when I'm representing the seller and I'm presenting offers to them, I'm going to tell them, hey, this one is shortening down their inspection contingency. They're more serious. They're, they really like the property if they're shortening down their contingencies. I just explained to you guys by the sixth day, no, no later than the sixth day, we'll know exactly what's going on with that property. We'll know exactly what's going on with that property. Next one. That's your first safety net, the inspection. Appraisal. So once the offer is accepted, Ivan, the bank, will send out an appraisal, an appraiser company to appraise the property, and essentially all they're doing is giving value to the property, stating that this property is worth what you're buying it for. The bank's not gonna fund something that's not worth paying for, right? So in this scenario, $500,000, if it doesn't appraise, if it appraises at 490, the bank will only fund for 490. Somebody has to come up with that difference, and you have essentially three options. The, buyer, the, the seller could reduce the price, we could ask the seller to reduce the price and we show them the appraisal report. The buyer, if you, and I have instances where the buyer really loved the property and they're willing to pay that difference or if we don't come into agreement, we, we, set, we part ways, right? 
Cool. Can I add one thing to that? Yes, sir. So uh, the appraisal is for us as a bank is to determine the value. I would never suggest that, it, and I just say because some people sometimes they want to skip out on the inspection, you know, but the appraiser is just going to determine to make sure that the house is the size that it's on high. the loan uh, your safety net I've been uh, essentially by default 21 days on, on this contingency we could shorten that down I usually like to shorten this one down just due to the fact that my team is going to solidify up front that we're qualified to purchase this home and I know we're gonna be able to seal the deal essentially on the financing side of things okay guys so once we once we're comfortable with all the findings on the property, all your buyers due diligence, right? Another inspection that I always recommend 100% is your termite inspection. But mandatory, mandatory. You want to know if there's any pests eating the wood, right? And, and section one will clear all that, replace all the damaged wood, and kill any um, living termites on that property. Absolutely. Appraisal, as we discussed, is giving value to the property and loan, making sure that the bank and you as a buyer are qualified and can, can make sure that that loan will close, right? 17, 17, 21 days, all these can be shortened down to make your offer look more appealing to the seller. And, and essentially, once these are good to go, once we're, we're, we're okay with the, with the findings, we get value on property, the, the loan is fully approved, we're, we're, we're almost done, guys. We're, we're all basically funding and recording at that point. Come on in, come on in. We're basically funding and recording at that point. And you're getting keys uh, in LA County. It funds and records the next day. That means when it records, you will be officially the owner of that property, right? And, and in Orange County, it'll fund and record the exact same day. Yeah. So LA County, there's a day after it funds. Orange County, it'll fund, it'll fund and record the same day. Does anybody have any questions? This is a lot. I understand that this is this is from coming from the back end of, of the things that I see, the things that I deal with on a daily basis. Um, most buyers are not familiar with any of this type of stuff, but I, I wanted to open it up to you guys so that you guys can see the you know what this process entails and the importance of certain things that you guys need to look out for and, and make sure that you guys have a, a grip on you know the, through the entire process. Is there any questions regarding inspections, contingencies, appraisals? It deposits, how you can protect your deposit. Essentially, the deposit will be protected as long as we don't remove any of these. Even if we remove this one and it does not come in value, we're still protected by this one, right? But like I just informed you guys, if I don't have to, I'm not removing any of these, any of them. Why? Because I'm trying to keep you guys protected through the entire transaction. Yeah. And it's hard to make sure you have enough funds. Absolutely. Yeah, so you're looking at about two to three hundred dollars per inspection. Or five hundred dollars, because like for the appraisal, it's like five hundred dollars. Exactly. And that's incurred through through, through the close of escrow. So that's part of your closing costs. I've been with discuss okay. Yeah, 
all this guy that we just um, talked about right here. Um, the plumbing, the foundation, the electrical, the general. That the general will cover all, all of those. They will, they, will, they will look at those four main things, mm -hmm. and, and that's about three to 350, depending on the square footage yeah, of the property. Is for the general. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but. The plumbing, I had to pay for, write a check for that. So they're, they're going under the house and checking the plumbing. Yeah, they did that already. I had to write a check for that. So did you get a, a licensed plumber to come yes. check out another, see? Yes, yeah. so if, if need be, if there's some issues down there and, and that the general inspector is saying, hey, get a licensed plumber out there, you might incur a cost. Like I said, it goes back to the point, you want a solid team that, that you can leverage. I know a lot of people, I work with a lot of inspectors, and for example, the termite inspection, you guys don't pay for that. I have a team that covers that. Well, I didn't have to pay for that. Please tell you guys how much. I didn't have to pay for that. The, the, buyer, the seller paid for that. Yeah, you can negotiate that, and that can be yeah. part of the terms. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any, any questions on, on, on the inspections? You guys, are, you guys have the right to do any inspection you guys wanted to. You guys could do an air quality in inspection if you guys wanted to, right? But we live in California, so it's probably not going to come out too clean anyways. <laughs> okay. So that's essentially the, the purchase process from start to finish. The main things you guys want to look at, once you guys decide that, hey, this property, we like it, we know that it has good bones, we know that the plumbing's not going to fail on us tomorrow, you, you guys essentially will, will move forward with the, with the transaction and the bank will fund the property and you guys will close on it and become the new owners of that home. Okay?